SGC here, and we are back for a movie review. Warning, Earth engine system failing. Total, 121 facilities. Correction, 1,001 correction. 3,000 correction. Correction, 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 correction. The Wandering Earth. So this is a science fiction movie directed by Frank Guo. And it's based on the novella of the same name by the Locus Award and Hugo Award winning author Liu Qi Xin. And it's released on February 5th, 2019. The 2019 Chinese New Year's Day. And AKA The Hollywood Reporter described this as China's first full-scale interstellar spectacular. Liu Xing Si is one of the producers. I think he's an executive producer on this. And it's a budget of 50 million and it made around 472 million according to Wikipedia as of filming. So who does this star? You probably just know Wu Jing, like the guy from Wolf Warrior 1, 2, Operation Red Sea. Was he in Operation Red Sea? Probably not. SPL films, Wolf Warrior, and I actually haven't seen any of I've seen SPL. That was fun. I haven't reviewed it. I should go back and relive it. Yeah, SPL, Wolf Warrior, that's probably where most people knows, know him from. You might know him from elsewhere because, you know, he's done other films. So anyways, what's this film about? Well, in the near future, science is fiction. I, I swear, like, you just gotta throw that out the window in a sense where... This science fiction film is really much more fiction. But then it's okay. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool, guys. Because basically, in the new future, the sun ages and is about to turn into a red giant, pushing the nations of the world to consolidate into the United Earth Government, a world government, and initiate a project to move Earth out of the solar system to the Alpha Centauri system in order to preserve human civilization. Huge thrusters running on fusion power are built across the planet to propel it. So we got thrusters to propel the Earth out of its own orbit into space. And... Away we go. So yeah, so basically it just talks about when things don't go well and humanity has to band together or one particular group has to work a little bit harder and then band together and save the Earth and human civilization as we know it. And that's basically the entire film. So what did I think? Well, first off, this looks amazing. I think this is probably hands down the best CG mainland Chinese film I've seen. And also just the aesthetics, the set design, the little details, top notch, great stuff. Hollywood, watch yourself. Cause this is the great stuff where the details of sort of those, I don't know what they call exosuits where they help you move things. That was cool. The whole rig thing, they had this ball as a steering wheel. That was cool. The suits itself, like the people that are not in the exosuits, also cool and holy smokes Jupiter wow that was really great I really loved all the outdoor sequences you know it's like fake but it's just like that looks good and and props for that because I mean China has been ha having a rough time in terms of the CG department where they just sort of I, I don't know what happened it's like good ideas but then things don't pan out as well so good on ya China CG people places um yeah so i don't know anyone in this cast except for mandat so which is awesome because just to see him in a huge chinese production blockbuster and it's just like great times because uh, i was re-watching a lot of stephen chow stuff and mandat is just in everything basically with stephen chow and it's just great to see him on the screen and everything wu jing plays an astronaut father who's just sent him into space and then we got these two i don't i assume they're new i well they, i can't assume anything really you can disprove me all you want but i haven't seen them we got the main guy and the girl Chew. Yeah, I'm not gonna try, but yeah, like, overall, like, it's weird, though. In terms of acting, it was fine. Everything was fine in terms of acting, because there was not that much acting per se. I mean, you got your rebellious kid, and you got this, like, a bored teenager, and then you got the troopers who are just, like, doing my job, following my orders, and then you got, that's, I think that's basically it. 
And then you got the scientists that thrown in the mix in the middle of the film and they weren't really introduced or maybe I'm just, I missed that part, but I don't know. Um, yeah, but it was cool like later in the film where you actually get all their names and I actually remembered who was who because I swear a lot of the sequences were in there in the trucks. I'm just like, who, what's his name again? I don't remember. But then again, that's just me with just bad memory of Chinese names because, because yeah, I don't speak the language. And, um, but yeah, so speaking of names and characters, I think that's like the biggest flaw in this film that nothing really happens beyond our rebellious, or, or not re rebellious, but rather our main guy who uh, has this like conflict with his father, and then finally when his father does something crazy, he's just like calling his dad out, literally, and then, and then the, do the, the, the adopted daughter also sort of like has, has moments of emotions when people die. And um, that that's it. Everyone else sort of doesn't really do anything. I mean, we got what, ha what that, that Lee Yi Yi guy who sort of bought, comes up with a huge plan of just saving humanity. And, um, and then he has this like weird relationship with the other scientist guy where he just, he's a hacker, Lee Yi Yi is a hacker and the other scientist guy just doesn't trust him. And then you also got this Australian um, ch Chinese guy, Tim. Uh, cool, I guess. Uh, one thing I really enjoyed was the translation. I loved how, you know, just Chinese people spoke Chinese. Everyone spoke their own languages and you tap, 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 translated. No need to have like foreign foreigners to speak either broken English or broken Mandarin or dubbed. Ugh. But one really weird thing, though, that really was kind of weird was when, like, everyone's just like, oh, we're all gonna die. And then it goes to this, like, Japanese team, and then all of a sudden it's, like, very stereotypical and just bad dialogue. And it's like, ugh. But beyond that, I would say it's, um, the whole saving the earth thing is definitely kind of weird, per se, because in the Western sort of atmosphere you have you know usually white people saving the world and then just having a Chinese team save the world it is kind of it's kind of like not I don't know I don't know how to say it it's just like oh interesting I wish that was a norm rather than me feeling this this is weird it's not I mean they do band together and like save the world as a collective in a sense but it's still the Chinese people doing the the most of the legwork which is great um, Interesting enough, the Americans aren't around except for maybe two sequences of a flag on a contract and a defeated American team of just like, we accepted our fate, we're gonna die. And yeah, so at least there's no white savior this time around. Good job, no Great Wall for sure. Um, yeah, politically, I mean, I'm watching like, you know, I'm, I'm influenced by the Silver Spoon here. Um, yeah, I have to agree, politically, there's really not much there. It's just more about you know, a Chinese lieutenant colonel, I think, and he's an astronaut, and then his team on the ground is, they're in China anyway, so it's like, it's okay for them to be the main characters, because it's setting-wise is over there, because they're in Shanghai and stuff, and, and yeah, I, I didn't really care who were the main characters, but I love the fact that this is a mainland production, really pushing sort of like what they can do with just 50 million dollars, and and it's just wow, like the CG was great, the, just the costume designs, the set designs, all that stuff was just great. It's the little things that really propels a production like forward, forward. And yeah, I mean, this is a novella. I really wish that I read it or I can get my hand on it. Currently, I am reading Three Body Problem by Liu Shi Sin and um, Xing, I don't, I don't know. Um, I can't even pronounce Cantonese names, so don't ask me what I'm doing. But yeah, anyways, it's 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 a great big leap forward, and um, I'm happy, happy for the mainline productions, happy for the people that were behind this film. Thank you, Silver Spleen, for just doing your review, so I know more of like the background and production about this. Wu Jing being like a very exact producer, pushing this film forward and casting himself in it, and then apparently people have problems with it. I'm just like, what? Basically, anyone could have been him. It's not like his acting was particularly, oh my god, horrible. 
it was just like, you know, he was just playing a dad that just had a lot of regrets in his life. And it, it came off as that uh, on the screen. So what else do you want? Another mainland actor that had bigger acting chops and drama chops? I guess people are just weird as like Wu Jin as an action star being all of a sudden like sentimental all of a sudden. It's like, we need our Matthew McConaughey here so he can go, all right, all right, all right, but in Chinese. That would be weird. No thanks. Um, but yeah, like, what else is there to say? Watch this. Totally, totally deserved. Um, yeah, I just don't like why people are like, why is this movie in America? I'm like, dude, international market. You know, this movie is going to make money. And hopefully more of Liu's books will be adapted. I seriously swear, if his trilogy gets adapted... Yes, because I'm having trouble visualizing a lot of things. It's so, I don't know. But but I am in wanting of a Leo trilogy of the three body problem. So yeah, with all that said, acting, new actors, what have you. Um, oh yeah, one thing I did bring up about the characters. So like the team, the, like the, the team of commando people. We have like Scarface. I love what Yi, Lee Yi Yi called them. Like Scarface, uh, Band-Aid, and like... Uh, like machine gun or whatever that basically was and he's like my name is doesn't matter love that line because it didn't like they really didn't contribute anything in terms of just plot device i mean could there could have been more character but i feel like the main cause of the thing was just like save the earth uh man that was it was a good 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 sequences in terms of just like well, that whole building while they're scaling that that was a really cool sequence where it's just like it made sense for them to go through this building and then build tension and build like thrills and everything so good on ya anyways i'm rambling go watch it the wandering earth totally deserves your ticket price because it's just something that we should celebrate as a you know um production of a country really going forward and really sort of catching up and and granted fine it's 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 not super deep but it looked really good so i would watch it just for that and it's not like oh my god this is so boring but it looks beautiful when is this movie gonna end it's a very hopeful film in a sense where there's like a lot of willpower happening and like the collective like let's just hope for things and then things will go well because hope can never die hope 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 I mean, you go watch Fast and Furious. Family, family, family is everything. So hope is a thing here. So there you go. That's it. I'm done here. Go watch The Wandering Earth. And uh, that is it for this movie review for Wandering Earth. Out. Out.